So I'm Claire Petros, I am a veterinarian, I work for the Olive Ridley Project and Ocean Care. I moved out to the Maldives in 2016 um, and I bought a stand-up inflatable paddleboard with me and I basically used to use it every day going around the island. My name is Carl, I'm an ocean lover, um, dedicated my life to protecting the oceans and I'm here basically to try and communicate why the oceans are important and how we can protect them. My name is Duffy and I'm a personal trainer. I, usually I work, I'm working at the gym, uh, but when I'm not, I really like to enjoy my time uh, out in the ocean. My name is Shazu, I'm a diving instructor. I love stand-up pedal boarding. I have been doing stand-up pedal boarding whenever I get a chance, whenever I go to work. So on this trip we're going to be paddling 100 kilometres over eight days around Bar Atoll, which is a biosphere nature reserve. And on the way we're going to be talking to schools and resorts and government officials and we're going to be paddling between the islands of interest. We're here because we want to raise awareness of the plastics use in the Maldives, but also on a global scale. Being that it, this country is predominantly, um, obviously 99% of it is water, uh, ultimately the plastics tend to end up in the sea. So we're really trying to show how you can use alternatives to single-use plastics and hopefully prevent them from being used wherever possible. Uh, I'm looking forward for this journey because uh, I will be going to meet lots of kids during the Jenny, when we stop to the islands, local islands. I have a daughter, she's four year old, and she loves beach cleanups. Uh, even last night when, we, when she was having dinner, she saw a piece of paper and she was saying, Mama, Mama, look, let's clean this mess up. It's a game for her. I've been taking her to all the cleanups I have been doing since she, since she was one. It is important for, for our country to do the beach cleanups and to aware people more about the environment because uh, we are in a critical situation because of the climate change. We are what we are because of the ocean, um, you know, in case of like tourism and before tourism it was fishing and our culture is completely connected to the ocean and people sometimes tend to forget it because they're moving on with their busy lives but I think from this expedition I just want more people to realize what they have and why it's so important to protect what we have. Well, in the Maldives, um, we use pole and line fishing, but often we find um, turtles such as Olive Ridley's stuck in the ghost nets and stuff, and they're coming from outside. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's proving to us that the ocean connects everyone together. And I think uh, the global community I think it's a stand that everyone needs to make together. So things like fishing nets, you know, they don't use fishing nets here, they use line and pole and yet their wildlife is getting entangled in fishing nets. Climate change is going to affect these low-lying islands and yet most of the emissions are coming from further afield. And plastic pollution as well, they're doing whatever they can to, to eliminate plastic from their lives and we have to do that around the world as well. So the call to action really is a global one. The Maldives is amazing, it's full of wildlife and we want to show that actually the people within the Maldives are doing a lot already to try and protect their environment, to protect it from climate change and plastic pollution and that a lot of the issues affecting this amazing place are coming from further afield and that the solutions have to come from a global community as well.
attempted to paddle this morning, but it's so windy. We made it to this island, Mitsubishi, and we've arrived to find so much plastic on the island. So we can't continue paddling because of the wind, but we can clean up the island. So that's what we're going to do this afternoon. resort of the expedition and the reason we're coming to the resort is we're looking at what they're doing to reduce their plastic consumption. For example this resort, Dusitani, has a desalination plant on the island so rather than plastic bottles they're giving everyone a refillable glass bottle and we're here basically to talk to the staff and the guests about what we're doing and about our message and they've got a little blurb on their bottles. This bottle is 100% recyclable, reducing our reliance on one-way plastics by 150,000 bottles a year. This is our small dedication to the world. Dimu is the recreations manager here. Dimu, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing to protect the environment at the resort here? Uh, there are a few things we are doing. One is a uh, paper making workshop, uh, which is uh, the paper we throw, we collect them, and then we make a paper out of it. And then most importantly, we organize a, a plankton workshop. Yeah. Uh, that is where uh, guests going to know what important plankton is, and then uh, especially in the Maldives, uh, for the fish and all those stuff. When they go to snorkeling or dive, they really, you know, they feel it. They really like it, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. We collect the mesh size of each different net which is there, uh, the type of sort of material it's made out of, and this sort of uh, helps us identify where these nets are coming from and which sort of fisheries it's linked to. And this way we can sort of continue our work with uh, other organizations and governments who are involved in sort of uh, fisheries.
Hi, I'm Ryan. And you guys work for the Manta Trust, right? We do indeed, yeah. Can you please tell me a little bit more about that? Um, well, here in Ba Atoll, we actually have the largest known population of reef manta rays in the entire world. Um, mostly because of the southwest monsoon season. Um, it blows in all the, the plankton and it kind of accumulates um, the plankton here so that that way they're able to have their feeding frenzy right here in Hanafaro Bay. Okay, and how many are we talking about? We're talking about sort of 10, 20? Uh, we have on record now over 4,500 individual reef manta rays. So as Rand said, that does make it the largest known aggregation of reef manta rays anywhere in the world. So here in the Maldives, the manta rays have really great protection. In 2014, all ray species were put on like a national protective list, um, but actually countries quite close by, um, in Sri Lanka for instance, they still have targeted fisheries for manta rays. That's only 650 miles away. Um, and also bycatch, so where they're caught accidentally in um, gill nets or ghost, ghost net gear. And have you seen any ghost nets, manta rays in here in the Maldives? Any evidence of that in sort of photographs? Um, we've definitely seen uh, injuries caused on either their cephalic fins, which are the two front fins that they use to feed. Um, and yeah, basically we can see that they've definitely been potentially a bit of rope that's been wrapped. Either there we can see in the water on the manta ray or previously scars, well. scars and injuries, yeah. Um, Jean, Puluko and Biosphere Reserve Ranger, Gogosun and Mita Shan Meng get so, uh, biosphere reserve rangers get. I have to ask that 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 I Management plan is the same as the management plan. The management plan is the same as the management plan. The management plan is the same as the plan. The management plan is the same as the management plan. The management plan is the same as the management plan. The management plan is the same as the protected areas The management plan is the same as the management plan. Illegal activity and Hinga come of Vanyam or the Madu and Masbana Mita Kariga, Tana Benuma, Vela, it is a co area. I come along the Mamma. I'm going to go do you have a biosphere reserve for the Chan? How long have you been in the biosphere reserve? In 2012. How long have you been in the biosphere reserve? which is the capital of Bar Atoll and we're here at the school to do some presentations with Parley and then a clean up around the harbour and around the ocean area. Yeah. 
half an hour. Yeah, about half an hour. Um, not even. <laughs> with little kids? Yeah, with little kids as well. So. Yeah, we have a whole army of people. Like, our troops behind. Keep going! Keep going! I'm going fast! Um, we have been taking plastic bags and bottles from the beach. Turtle thinks a plastic bag is just like a, a jellyfish and die and eat it and going to die. Welcome everyone to Suneva Fushi, very glad you could spend some time with us. Uh, my name's Gordon, I'm the Waste to Wealth Manager. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here at the Eco Centre? Yeah, sure. So um, our main goal at uh, Eco Centro is to add value to the waste that, that we receive. Um, that's why our philosophy is Waste to Wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a number of different examples of, of what we do with different waste streams. So for example, uh, waste wood, uh, coconut shells, jungle trimmings uh, are all turned into charcoal. Um, then we don't need to import charcoal for our pizza oven and, and barbecue, um, but rather can, um, uh, can supply that just with, with waste from the island. Uh, we have quite a lot of styrofoam that comes to the island in the, uh, in the form of food packaging, um, a lot of glass bottles as well. Um, we crush and shred both of those and mix them with a bit of cement to make um, recycled blocks for construction. Uh, so. Uh, there again, we're turning something that would otherwise just be thrown away or be a burden to transport off to a, to a landfill or something. We're actually turning it into a, a useful product that has value um, that we can even charge uh, another department or even uh, another island if they wanted to buy them. Uh, one of the hopes is that if we can show um, that actually it's, it, it saves a lot of money to manage waste uh, responsibly, that more and more people would uh, take that on rather than just do the de facto and kind of pile it onto a boat and send it to a, a rubbish island. So is Sunny the Fushi alone in making these steps or are other resorts as well seeing the value of, of what you're doing and coming on board too? Yeah, well we strive to be at the forefront of, of, um, of this kind of work um, but we are an open book, we want to share what we're learning. So I hear you're meeting up with some of the other resorts later in the week to talk about what you can do as a group in the Maldives. Yeah, yeah so we do try to meet periodically um, uh, with the resorts in Bay Atoll. Uh, we talk about um, some of the things that are happening on an atoll scale uh, and also some of the challenges that, that we face environmentally and how we can help each other solve those issues. And is it just waste that you talk about at the meetings? No, not at all. Too? No, we've got, um, obviously, this incredible um, marine environment is a big topic of conversation. So how um, to maintain our reefs, um, what, what kind of projects are really working in terms of um, uh, coral planting and, and, and um, uh, those kind of projects. Uh, other initiatives that just uh, mobilise the community as well so each of us as resorts have partner um, neighboring islands and we help them to take plastic uh, away and support the Parley project uh, and other projects we help them um, to collect waste if it gets it gets stuck on those local islands using our own supply boats so so that's the sort of thing we can coordinate uh, across the resorts 